Hello and welcome to the big picture. The autonomy in the functioning of the CBI is back in focus with the caustic observations by the Supreme Court in the Colgate scandal. The case has not only revived the debate on the issue, but has also brought into sharp focus the role of the governments and their interference in the functioning of the CBI. It was more than 15 years back that the Supreme Court had laid down guidelines in the Jain Hawala case following a petition filed by Vineet Narayan, a journalist. The guidelines sought to ensure autonomy and independence of the CBI, fair and just probes and transparency in the selection of the CBI director. But various governments since has not really managed to ensure it. Now with the Supreme Court directing the government to tell by July what kind of laws they will bring about to ensure functional autonomy of the CBI, many questions have now cropped up. In the present circumstances, can autonomy be ensured at all? More importantly, what are the pitfalls of autonomy to the CBI? How important is the role of the director when it comes to asserting its autonomy? Is full autonomy desirable when governments are accountable to the parliament? We will discuss all these issues today with a panel of experts. I have with me Prashant Bhushan, the man who has set the ball rolling by the filing a PIL in the Supreme Court in the Colgate case, which resulted in the Apex Court's observations. TSR Subramanian, former cabinet secretary, Balvinder Singh, former special director, CBI, and Hardyal Singh, former additional secretary, secretary, Central Vigilance Commission. Welcome to all of you. Prashant, I would like to come to you first. You have, uh, you know, it has become a habit on your part to uh, create this kind of a, you know, kind of uh, a lot of uh, media, and also it's a serious matter. What you have done in the Skolgate case has created this kind of sensation and also a, a, a debate in this country. Now, you expect, what do you expect the government to do? In July, they are expected to come out with a, sta with, with a report or a status report or whatever, say, uh, saying how they will ensure the autonomy. What do you want the government to do? No, so far as autonomy is concerned, uh, our views on this have been very clear. Experience has shown that uh, despite the Supreme Court's orders in the Vineet Narayan case, in the Hawala case, where they said that the CBI must be made functionally independent of the government, and they sought to do it by placing it under the supervisory control of a CVC, which was given statutory status, we have found that this has not worked in securing the independence of the CBI and the facts in this Colgate case as well as uh, many other cases show that the CBI continues to function as an instrument of the government and in politically sensitive cases they bail out, it is used to bail out uh, ministers in the government and has opposition leaders etc. for political ends. Now, the reason for this is that the CBI continues to be under the administrative control of the government, which means that postings, transfers, promotions, suspensions, they are all controlled by the government and post-retirement jobs as well, so far as director CBI is concerned. And these powers are being used by the government to compromise the independent functioning of the CBI. Therefore, we said during this Lokpal bill uh, uh, debate, yes. we said that uh, an independent Lokpal has to be created, which is completely independent of the government, and the CBI should be brought under the administrative control of the Lokpal. Right. And the Lokpal will be in turn accountable to the Supreme Court. So that was the structure that was envisaged, because unless you give administrative independence to the CBI from the government, Without leaving it an unleashed body, it should be under the administrative control of somebody, but that somebody should be independent of the government like the Lokpal. Okay. Uh, uh, let me bring in Mr. Subramaniam. Mr. Subramaniam, 15 years have gone since uh, in the Jain Hawala case, the, uh, the Supreme Court has said that had, had made those observations and given those guidelines. And as Prashant was now pointing out, is, is appointment the only way in which uh, the, the the governments are able to control the functioning or the uh, functioning of the CBI, or what are the other ways? And do you see that? Do you see any any solution to this problem apart from bringing is is Lokpal 
as being suggested by people like Prashant Bhushan and the way it has finally emerged in the in the in the parliament, is that the way out? Well, you see, look, there are uh, I, uh, first the first uh, issue is, do we want an autonomous uh, CBI? Exactly. And what do we mean by CBI is autonomy? This is number one. Yes. I think on that the answer by and large has to be yes, and we have got Supreme Court also pronouncing yesterday that we need it. So what does it mean? It means in three different ways. The control is on the basis of personnel, not only the director, but the personnel down the line, those on deputation, their terms and conditions, their promotions, their transfers, etc. on personnel. Number two, in terms of legal support, legal help from the Department of Law. Number three, from the financial help and ability to hire experts from outside. It's a, it is really a simple matter of management once we make up our mind to give autonomy in these, these matters, it must be remembered that no agency in the world or in India can be given totally or to total autonomy Absolutely. and without checks and balances. Right. We can't create one more monster. Absolutely. On the other hand, the, uh, the, the present system ensures, considering that 70 to 80 percent of cases investigated by CBI involve some government personnel at some level at the center or the state, there's a huge conflict of interest if the law ministry is directly engaged with the CBI. So the first solution has to be to disengage it from the law ministry. The law ministry's job is to protect the citizens, etc., not, not, not to influence CBI. So, and this is also the, the, the pith and substance of the Vinit Narayan judgment. Right. Secondly, Lokpal, I think, will be an excellent solution. If we get the Lokpal, an independent one, a neutral one, uh, selected unanimously, uh, I, I think it will be a very good, very good solution. If that is not possible for some reason, as a temporary measure, we can have the CVC strengthen him with the people identified, a small committee of three or four people, identified in a bipartisan or in a or sort of multilateral manner, with bringing in, with bringing in the Supreme Court and the two main or three main political parties, have a small committee which will oversee its technical work and also uh, help in recruitment of the staff. In other words, we need autonomy in the sense I'm defining, number one, that you, it will be terrible to have a, a, a parliamentary oversight of the parliamentary committee, uh, and we cannot use FBI ex examples, etc. elsewhere, given the nature and the venality of our own politicians, that will be the worst thing that we can do to give it a parliamentary oversight committee. It has to be an independent oversight committee. Ideal will be Lokpal. Okay. Uh, Prashant, you know, I, I just want to bring you in immediately. Quickly, do you think in the, in the present case, when, when, they, when the uh, law minister calls the CBI director and says that, you know, come and... Uh, come for a meeting with me and bring all those reports. Do you think in the in the present circumstance, the present in the existing scheme of things, the CBI director could have said, "No, I, I, I'm not coming." No, he need not have said that I am not coming, but he need not have showed. He could have definitely uh, refused to show the status report to the law minister. That's what the Vinit Narayan judgment says. And he should have certainly refused any kind of uh, changes, changes in, the draft in the report. Okay. I mean, oh. uh, uh, that is, that is, that's an obvious proposition that he, he, he should not have shown, agreed to show the status reports to anybody. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Balwinder Singh, yes, is, 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 is that a practical... Uh, is it practical? What you know? Don't show the, the law minister calls calls you people and say that you know. Please show me the report. What's happening? You think the director of the CBI could have said no? I can't. I can't okay. show it, or I'll not make any changes. What you say? I think instead of commenting on this individual instance, I, mean, I would rather the, like to put the whole thing in a perspective. In a perspective. Okay. Now there's a lot of criticism of CBI not being fully insulated, right, from extraneous pressures. I think we need to look at the entire investigative mechanism of the country. Right. CBI also works under the same criminal procedure code and same general laws. There is no separate law. Now, the problem of political interference, the problem of extraneous influences is common for states as well as CBI. But if you look at the scale of interference, I have experience of working in the state, very long experience, field experience of 
more than 10 years as district SP and deputy commissioner in uh, metropolitan policing, as well as in CBI 13 years. I can say that CBI is fairly well insulated compared to states. So the overall subject someday, today it may look like a digressing from the main subject, the country needs to debate as to how to insulate the entire investigative mechanism, whether at state level or, or central level. Okay. And secondly, whether in this particular instance, I think Supreme Court has already given its view, there is no need of giving any further view on K this subject. The caged parrot. Do you agree or uh, you, you, I CBI think this director is a caged uh, parrot? In show here only in your channel, yesterday I had said that this is an expression of anguish. <laughs> you should not take it in literal sense. CBI works quite independently most of the times. You have seen the case where one of the senior ministers, close kin, was arrested. There are any number of such cases, I will not get into those details, where CBI has acted very independently this, against very strong this, political this interests Nevio, of the time. Nevio, the minister, could not have been arrested if there was interference. Is that what you are trying to say? That's exactly what I am trying to say. Okay. The very fact that they went about it without knowledge of anybody, without their checking up with anybody, and went ahead and arrested shows that CBI acts independently. There are abrasions, but there are general culture of CBI is one of not accepting interference. People may not agree with this observation because general perception created by media is that CBI gets influenced very frequently, which is not true. Okay. CBI has built an internal okay. culture, Let which I would like to explain in one minute. Quick, I will come back to that, what kind of a culture and things like that. Yeah. I want Mr. Hardial Singh to uh, uh, bring in Hardial Singh. Mr. Hardial Singh, by and large, is the present CBI, presently the CBI, is by and large, is it independent? Or uh, is these kind of cases are an aberration? That's what Mr. Balvinder Singh says. Well, I would like to say only this much, that I worked in the Central Vigilance Commission for nearly six years. Yes. And I found that by and large... I came across some excellent investigative reports. I came across reports where I did not see any influence at all. So if there is influence, it must be in some high voltage case, some prominent case where the interests of powerful people are involved. And those are surely an exception and not the rule. But having said that, I would agree with, uh, with Mr. T.S.R. Subramaniam that what we, total autonomy is not possible. Every, every organization... Not possible or not desirable? Not also. desirable. It should be, it, every organization has to be subject to some checks and balances. We do not want to create monstrosities, even assuming that we have good people working in, a, in an organization. But according to me, a system, if the CBI is to be made autonomous, in any manner, either as the way Mr. Prashant Bhushan is suggesting or the way Mr. T.S.R. Subramaniam is suggesting, or even under the present dispensation, it must satisfy three conditions. First, the powers that be must give sufficient, must bestow sufficient trust. You cannot have trust when there is continuous interference. Secondly, having given that trust, the organization and its officers must be held fully accountable for the investigation which they do. Thirdly, there has to be a certain transparency in their own system so that when they are called to question by courts of law, they should be able to, they should be able to show that they have followed the rules and they have respected the rules. Fourthly, there must be a will to make this thing work. After will all, Mr. Prashant, will to make it work. That's where I, I'm sure that's that's what you, you will also agree with. The, the will is lacking, and it is not. It is nothing to do with any particular political party or any any particular party which is in government. Yes, unfortunately, all political parties, and especially the present government, has used the CBI for its own political ends, that is to shield their own ministers and uh, use it uh, to blow hot and cold when it comes to opposition leaders like Mulayam Singh, Mayawati, etc., as we have seen repeatedly. Right. 
I have seen that in all cases involving uh, high functionaries such as ministers, etc., the rule is that the CBI does not function without the instructions of the government. Uh, this, this case of Mr. Pawan Kumar Bansal is probably an exception to the general rule. We have made complaints against so many ministers with full documentary evidence asking the CBI to investigate these matters, but they have never done so. Even in the case of 2G, we made a complaint, they didn't do anything, ultimately the CBC asked them to register an FIR. Same thing happened in Colgate, it was the CBC which asked them to register an FIR. So virtually the rule is that in high profile cases involving high functionaries, the CBI never functions independently. And that is why the political class or the various parties that have been in power are unwilling to let go of the administrative control over the CBI. Right. We are here not talking about complete autonomy to the CBI in the sense that they will be unaccountable to anybody. We are talking about making them independent from the government because having them under the administrative control of the government involves a conflict of interest because okay. it is really the government which is being investigated in these acts of corruption. Absolutely. And that is why we say that either make it administratively accountable to the Lokpal or even to the CVC, but first you have to strengthen the CVC Absolutely. by making it a much stronger body, by making the appointments to the CVC independent of government control. Okay. Okay, Prashant, we'll, uh, we'll continue the discussion. You know, there are issues which you have raised which needs further discussion. I'm sure Mr. Subramanian will have something to say on that. Please keep watching. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. We are discussing in the context of the Supreme Court's observations on the CBI, how to ensure functional autonomy to the CBI. Mr. Subramanian, you heard uh, Prashant. You know, the, the concept of providing a, a, an alternate mechanism where administrative control, except administrative control, there's nothing else which the government has. You know, in, in this kind of a parliamentary system of government, how does government be accountable to the legislature when if, if one, of the, one of its bodies is not accountable to, its, uh, to it as far as its functioning is concerned? Well, uh, I'll take just one second before coming back to the issue that you have raised just now. Yes. I agree entirely with the point made that the CB, CBI itself is a very efficient organization by and large. Yes. And compared to the, what is happening in the states, the, the vigilance directorates and the crime branch in most states are in terrible condition. Sooner or later, after CBI, attention has to go to those agencies also yes. to free them from the clutches of direction. Coming back to the point that you have raised just now, uh, I think the debate should now move, as you are rightly doing, from whether or not autonomy or functional autonomy to how. I think that is the issue. Absolutely. The issue that you are posing is, how does parliament control? Yeah, parliament absolutely. doesn't need to control. It does not need to control everybody. If you have a statute, if it is a statutory body, it is a rule of law, the statute will control the organization. And the, and the, and the job of the parliament is to create a good, sound statutory uh, system under which CBI can function. After that, the various actors can be brought in place. I think there are two fundamental issues. We should all agree, and now I guess, hopefully, it is inevitable after the latest Supreme Court uh, comments, that autonomy is to be given. Yes. There is, if, then it is a very fairly simple mechanism. How you can, I, don't think, I don't think we should get confused with parliamentary control does not mean that parliament will control human investigations. I'm not talking of control, I'm talking of account law, accountability. CRPC has to be completely independent. If it is a statutory body, it, it is accountable under, the, under, under law. It gives a report every year about number of cases, how it handles successes, failures. It will be examined, it will be studied, it will be criticized, it will be attacked, praised in parliament. That is the control by the parliament. It does not mean that they, that they clear the budget or do, do those things. Right. Okay. Uh, or do the postings, etc. Okay. Okay, Mr. Balwinder Singh. I, 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 I think what Mr. Bhushan said is correct. Okay. Either Lokpal or you have the other system. Um, uh, or TVC. Mr. Uh, Prashant Bhushan, 
you know, it's, I, I, I'm a little intrigued in all these discussions and debates which have now begun. Suddenly, you people are not talking so much of Lokpal as much as you people were talking about now. Uh, do you think, are, are, are you disappointed with the, with the way the whole thing has worked out? Or, you know, are you now thinking of a different system? No, 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 no. We have continuously been talking about the Lokpal and we are saying that the CBI, we have always said that the CBI should be brought under the administrative control of an independent Lokpal which needs to be set up as a constitutional or a statutory body. And that Lokpal must be functionally, financially and even in terms of appointments independent of the government its accountability should only be to the Supreme Court. We have continuously that maintained that. But we yeah. also believe, we, we know and we realize, our experience has taught us that neither this government nor any future government, even if uh, the BJP comes to power, they are not going to. These mainstream political parties having tasted the fruits of having such a body under their control are not going to let go of control over this body and that is why we are not hopeful unless uh, the parliament uh, is totally reconstituted and a party like the Aam Admi party or some <laughs> other uh, kind of uh, political okay. group which is uh, no, but, uh, totally honest and clean comes to Prashant, power we are not going to see these changes. Okay, Prashant, Prashant I'm sure you know uh, your hopes and nobody can stop you from hoping uh, that you know your party can come to power. But the fact of the matter is, this ne this question needs to be addressed, Mr. Balwinder Singh. You, you know now, do you accept? Do you agree with what Mr. Subramanian says that this functional autonomy to the CBI is necessary? Uh, you know, whatever formulations he has made, do you agree with that, or do you think that, that there's a problem with that? I think he has analyzed the issue very well. There are three aspects, as he rightly pointed out. Legal autonomy yes. in legal matters, appointment of special counsels, filing appeals, right. etc. Personal matter and financial, finances, yes. budget. Now, budget will remain with the government. I do not know what is the system as far as CAG is concerned. But if they have some system where budgetary autonomy is there in the sense once budget is allotted, then they are independent to decide how to go about it. That can be one model. As far as personal is concerned, the things are far more complicated. Because CBI, by and large, at higher levels, is a deputationist organization. Yes, it doesn't have a, its, it's, its own cadre. Its own cadre is limited. It's very limited to the lower levels. And uh, now, with IPS being the main cadre, manning the positions, senior positions, you have a complete link with the government. Yes. Now, how do you severe that link? It's not possible. You will not get the best officers if you, do, if you severe that link. So it's an extremely difficult situation where you think of autonomy in terms of personal. Okay, that is, I mean, I, I, I would like to get uh, Mr. Subramaniam's uh, opinion on that. Mr. Subramaniam, no, this is a very Mr. what Mr. Balwinder Singh says is a very practical problem. Yes, I think he is. I think he is perfectly correct. That, in fact, is likely to be the main issue. But I don't think it is insurmountable. We can have uh, enough creativeness, enough understanding. We have many. We have the IB, for example, which is fairly effective. We have so many agencies in so many other fields where uh, where people and deportation are our atomic energy areas. There are so many energy areas and uh, public sector undertakings where it is possible. I agree with you. It's a sensitive area. It has to be thought through. We need not do it in the next five minutes. But it can easily be done. You can find a way to have competent people to come. For example, in the Chief Election Commission, the Chief Election Commissioner's office, when they come on deputation for the five or six years or ten years they are there, they are entirely under the admin control of the CEC. Okay. And the CEC decides who comes and who goes, okay. not the government. Okay, Mr. I, I, we can have, I, 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 it's possible to solve, to solve these problems. I, I want to, Mr. Mr. Hardayal Singh, you think, uh, you think this problem of personal, ultimately it's the personal which matters. You know, in all these discussions, how much spine does a person show when he is, even if he has the authority, the power, whether he shows the spine or not? So the, the, the question raised by Mr. Balwinder Singh is a very key question there. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, problems of personnel are, are very critical. But I am more concerned that once a person enters an organization, the question is, as you put it, will he show the spine? 
And that can only come if through very intensive, you know, professional training, ultimately we all have to learn to be professional in our relationships, when we're dealing with colleagues, when we're dealing with, especially on sensitive matters, uh, okay. there is, a, there is a something to be said for encouraging, you know, arm's length relationships where we do not allow personal considerations to enter into our okay. professional judgments. Okay. I think uh, we are completely run out of time. I would have wanted uh, uh, Prashant to uh, come in with... Uh, Prashant, do you want to make a brief comment on, uh, on this you know, I'm, I'm, before I wrap up? As far as the personnel is concerned. Personnel is not a big problem in my... Personnel is not a big problem because uh, you can have a permanent cadre of the CBI uh, and you can induct, uh, directly induct people from all the various state cadres of the IPS permanently into the CBI. They should not come on deputation because if they come on deputation, then their uh, independence yeah, is compromised because they know they have to go back to some state government or, or uh, whatever. Okay. And that is why it should be a permanent cadre. There can be direct recruitment, there can be lateral induction, but it should be permanent induction into the CBI. Okay. On that note, we have to end. This is, a, this is a debate which should continue and which I'm sure will continue for the next several weeks and months before the government presents its report to the Supreme Court. This, this, this is a time when we need to uh, reconsider all the points which, which came up during the Lokpal debate. The Supreme Court has laid open the, an, an avenue for, for the country to debate this issue again, a functional autonomy of the CBI, how to ensure that. Thanks to all my guests, uh, Prashant Bhushan, TSR Subramanian, Hardayal Singh and Mr. Balvinder Singh. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in the big picture same time tomorrow.